Hello my soccer universe to a way too late Europa League review. This competition is probably the most open one of all the European competitions because the playing field is relatively level. We still don't really know who are the best teams in there to be honest. What stuck out in this match day 4 round was of course that Lazio are the only team that still remain perfect and now they have actually beaten a big opponent with some luck. Also stuck out to me the Dutch teams performed really well. Ajax getting a huge win, AZ getting also a huge win over a much better opponent in Fenerbahce and Twente also probably should have gotten a win in Nice with a man more they concede an equalizer late on but then there was also an Eastern European surge with Ferenc Varos, FCSB and Victoria Pilsen also getting quite remarkable wins along the way I told you it's a very open playing field and there are some big names that are kind of down the table. We had Roma, of course, not doing good things and they are having now a really tough schedule coming up with Real Sociedad being outside of the playoff spots even. And Porto and Braga, two Portuguese top teams also more on the outside looking in. So let's review the matches and then we'll put it in the larger context of the entire competition. Already on Wednesday we saw Besiktas beating Malmö 2-1. They were largely dominating the game but took to the 76th minute to break down the Malmö defense. Mucci then Kilis Joy in the 85th doubles the lead and very late on Riggs gets a consolation goal from Bode suffered their first loss in the Europa League this time at home too. Up until then winless Karabakh losing 2-1 at home. The go-ahead goal by Baramos is one that you should check out. Absolutely great shot. Bode get an equalizer before the half but it's in the second half and Zubir gets the winner for Karabakh. In a duel of pod 1 teams, Frankfurt took on Slavia Prague, largely dominated the game, however could not really create that many chances, but in the 53rd minute Omar Mamouche with a brilliant free kick gets Frankfurt the deserved winner, although there was the chance to equalize for Slavia in the last minutes of the game. Curiously enough, Braga had never beaten Elfsborg and this time around it is a 1-1 draw in the fog in Sweden. FCSB get already a third win of this Europa League campaign, beating up until then unbeaten Midtjylland. 2-0 and the goals were actually quite crazy. I mean, Tanage in the 16th minute gave FCSB the lead. Then you saw right after halftime, Midtjylland really wanted to storm forward. They played back to the goalie for a long kick. However, it is intercepted by Pirli Gea and then it bounces off his chest into the empty net. Absolutely mad and kind of funny goal. Of course a big matchup of this Europa League round was Galatasaray taking on Spurs ending in a 3-2 win for the home side and is a game that delivered on all accounts especially in the first half where it was a really wide open game and yes Spurs probably played only a lineup that they would play in Europe then not in the Premier League and it was the Victor Seaman show he scores two in the process as well. However the first goal came through Ekun in the sixth minute a really brilliant shot from far out the box equally nice was Spurs equal in the 18th minute when it was a deep ball from the side to Lancashire who then plays it over directly to Johnson who can tap it into the empty net and then it's the Victor Osimhen show yes the Spurs defense succumbed to the pressure of Gala's offensive pressing and both of the time was Dries Mertens so two former Napoli players combining the first one was more or less Osimhen free on goal the second one he takes on a cross with his foot still jumping really high to give Gala a two-goal halftime lead. Second half calmed down a little bit and yes Lancashire was then sent off with a second yellow card and still Solanke with a backheel goal nonetheless just a few minutes later gets Spurs back into the game but Gala see the game out for another win. They're riding now high in the table. For a long time Ludogorets looked good against Athletic Club. They had a 20th minute lead and held on to it up until the last 20 minutes of the game when within two minutes Athletic Club turned around. First it's in Jackie Williams and then Serrano 73rd and 74th minute that give the hosts of this season's final the win. In a battle of two winless teams from France and Netherlands, Twente go to the Côte d'Azur, have a 2-0 lead and still only manage a 2-2 draw and Nice even managed to equalize with a man down as the op was sent off when it was 1-2 Joe getting that equalizer. But for about an hour this was all Twente in a duel of two teams with near identical records, Olympiacos and Rangers play out a 1-1 draw El Kabi. Who else is getting Olympiacos the lead? However, just a few minutes later, Dessas gets an equalizer. Rangers maybe having a tad more of the game, but I think overall the 1-1 
is an alright result. Roma thought they could see out a 1 0 lead in Brussels thanks to Mancini header. Goalie was not happy about that one as Mancini clattered in him, but he got the ball there first. Roma also hit the cross, but however, I also would say in the first half there was way more initiative from Union Saint Gilloise. And then McAllister gets the deserved equalizer. Roma still very much middling in this competition despite their high seed. High flying Ajax maintained their high position in the Europa League table thanks to a 5 0 thumping of Maccabi Tel Aviv at home. Tarare Taylor Hood score in the first half, and then the second half, Brob and Fiskim add two more. Of course, they were the ugly scenes after the game when Israeli fans have been chased through Amsterdam and threatened with violence. That's stuff that we really do not need to see. Without Mourinho on the touchline, Fenerbahce suffered the first defeat, losing to a Z, another Dutch team. 3 1 away from home, and please watch the goals. The first two AZ goals are beautifully played and finished up by Dai and Smith. In between those goals, Enesiri actually saw a penalty saved, but he then gets a few minutes later a goal to make up for his miss. And then Casius late on makes it a proper scoreline for AZ. The final 4 0 scoreline for Ferenc Varos might look ugly for Dinamo Kiev, but this was a relatively even game. Of course, conditioned by an early red card for Dubinchak of Dinamo Kiev, but the whole tight end ends a really ugly back pass that comes to Borges, who finds Varos. Varga in the 54th minute, Ferenc Varos take the lead, Sakariasen, Varga and Saldania add three more. Hoffenheim's 2-2 draw with Lyon was a really weird game because for most of the game, I would say for an hour, Hoffenheim dominated that one, had an absolute deserved lead through a Frenchman, Gandre, and then Abner gets OL and equalizer and in stoppage time, like I said, even gets the go-ahead goal for OL who were at that moment actually the better team and you think they're winning and then Tohimchi in the 96th minute gets Hoffenheim at least least a point. There's only one perfect team left in the Europa League and that team is Lazio getting another win and this is the first time they beat a big opponent in Porto 2-1. I think it's the first ever win against Porto at home as well and they do so with two stoppage at time goals in each half. First Castellano crosses it in for Romagnol to head it in in the fifth minute of stoppage time of the first half. Estacchio gets Porto. I think a deserved equalizer and then Isaacson finds Pedro to give Lazio the win in the 92nd minute. This Lazio side doing really Really well and are still leading the Europa League table. It was the Ahmad Diallo show in United's win over Park, but that only tells half the story. Of course, United were a little bit more active in that game, Park trying to contain them. Ahmad Diallo in 50th minute as a Bruno Fernandes assist gives United the lead. However, then Park had created actually quite a few chances, and especially the one by Tice where he's free on goal. And then Diallo settles the game in the 77th minute. And with a 2 1 win over Real Sociedad, Victoria Pilsen have more the same record as United. One win and three draws. That was actually a big win, one of the upsets. So Real Sociedad really not getting into this Europa League season. And it seemed like this game is gonna fizzle out in a 1-1 drawbridge. Probably was reflective of the game. But then Vajolin takes a shot that is wickedly deflected and via the inside of the post goes in the net in the 90th minute for Victoria's winner. With a stoppage time equalizer, RFS earn their second point in this competition. Rather remarkably so. Anderlecht thought they had gotten the win in the 85th minute to Strikings, but but they probably should have scored before that as well to earn their win. I've said it before in my videos on the Champions League and the uh, Conference League, it's really hard to gauge what this all means because we have a 36-team table and you know only four games played and there's always flip-flopping. So that's why I like to look at the expected standings. That gives me a little bit more of a feel because it also takes into account the average results for the remaining opponents. And with Spurs losing, they actually fall down the table a little bit. It's now Lazio ahead of Athletic Club and Ajax. That actually tracks quite well. I think Galatasaray also riding high as of course Eintracht Frankfurt. If you look now a few bigger teams, we see Roma is now in the unseeded spot for the playoff as is Porto with their losses. Both of these have relatively tough opponents coming up. Arias was there barely sneaking in the two Czech teams also. But if we look, there are some big names that would not make it at the moment, which are Braga, Nice and Twente. Those are teams from relatively well-respected leagues. I even would say the Union, Saint-Gilas and Power being that low down is a little bit of a surprise. 
Bucks. On the flip side, we have rather unfancy teams like FCSB and Bodo Glimt and Midjylland actually relatively high up the table. They would be seeded in the playoffs so far. A higher the expected table doesn't actually reflect on what are the chances for winning. Spurs, yes, lose a teeny bit of ground, but they're still the awesome favorite to win this competition. Lazio now in a much better position in flip-flop over Manchester United. And then Athletic Club is also in the discussion. Those four teams seem to be the ones from where the winner of this competition could come from, but we know the Europa League is wide open. So the extended field is anything. Ajax, Porto, Frankfurt, Roma, maybe Galatasaray. I honestly don't think that Roma will necessarily go in there because this club is too much of a mess. Or maybe we'll have really an outside winner again. Looking at the upcoming matches, I mean, there are two relatively big name matches with Real Sociedad hosting Ajax, Real Sociedad def desperately needing that win, and also, of course, Spurs hosting Roma, which, yeah, sounds big, but given how Roma are, should be an easy win for Spurs, to be honest. I'm also looking at AZ taking on Galatasaray after beating Fenerbahce. Can they beat the other Turkish team? That will be an interesting matchup. Leaders Lazio take on Ludogorets in the early kickoff. But to be honest, there's not a real standout tie except for the two that I've mentioned before. Well, those were my thoughts and recap of the Europa League action. As I said, it's relatively wide open and every match they throws up some really interesting results. I also like that you travel all over Europe and really still get some recognizable names. Glatasaray, probably one of the sensations so far, but given that the Victor Seaman up front, that's quite some star power there as well. In any case, let me know how your team did in this Europa League midweek. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!